Okay, you guys haven't actually had a bike video released to you, or a full bike build released to you in a while, so I found a way to use the old parts on the Peugeot that I haven't actually used yet. I tried to use them to build the activator, but, um, well, yeah, I ended up not using them. So I've got next age country uh, crank set. I have the derailleur, derailleur. I've got a set of bars that were left over from an old fixie. I've got a set of pedals that came off my new mountain bike. Um, I've got a set of ooh, light other shifters. These brake levers came off the Peugeot, but they are not in the best condition, broken. Um, and I did have a button bracket lying around. So what I've decided to do was, oh wait, also, wheels. The old wheels off the Peugeot, before I bought the Campag ones. Anyway, what I decided to do was go out and buy this. This is a 1991 diamond back apex um, I pay 30 quid and I got the seat thrown in um, he actually chucked in a stem as well um, but <laughs> with that stem which is here that one it's got a ridiculously long reach so I am not using that stem um, a little bit about the bike um, it was a well 1991 Diamondback Apex should have 26 inch wheels um, cantilever brakes Shimano Dior I believe group set Avenir parts on like the saddle, seat post, stem, bars it should have all that good stuff on it um, it actually had Avenir rims as well I found a brochure um, so this is what the bare bones I'm starting with. What I'm going to do is put on as much of that stuff as I can. I've decided to buy a shorter stem. Um, I've got some caliper brakes to put on because I'm not using 26 inch wheels, I'm using 700C, which actually fit, that's good. Um, but when I put them in I'll show you because I can't use the canties anymore. Fortunately, the frame is already drilled for calipers. So I'm going to be putting calipers on. And they're just some basic Tektro. Got some brake levers to go with it. And instead of using old trigger style, which are just big and bulky, I'm going to be using some grip shifters. So that's all to go on. Um, I've got to refurbish this rear derailleur. But that's all going on this, and then I'll have a, I guess it's going to be like a little commuter. I'll probably put some mud guards on it and saves me using my road bike in the rain. Hmm. But yeah, first step is going to be bottom bracket, I think. Okay, bottom bracket. Um, originally, the guy said it came with a normal cup and cone style bum bracket like this and um, this is actually the original one from the Peugeot but what I had in the spares was which one is it this one it's a Shimano cartridge bearing seal cartridge um, but it's only 113 mil so I tried it and I found there was no way in hell that this group set, a uh, crank set, was actually going to get on because it was, didn't have enough clearance. So, measured this, the old one, 122.5 mil from end to end. Now zoom out a bit. 122.5 mil. Luckily, Shimano still produce them, or produce something similar. You've got a left and a right, um, so this is going to go on. It's 73 mil, uh, 
24 threads per inch, 122.5 mil axle, and I will apparently have to space this out one mil. So I'm gonna put it in this way first, and then maybe see how it fits. I might have to take it back out and put a spacer in this side, which I've got somewhere. But we shall see. Okay, uh, just tried it. Found that if I screwed this side all the way in, and was going to space that side, I just had plenty of clearance on the non-drive side, but the drive side did pass. But it was very close, so I'm going to use one of these spacers to fit it in. That'd be a one mil, and then I think I've got three two mils maybe yep so I'm gonna try a one mil spacer in there just behind sit it behind see there's a 72 mil shell and a 73 mil bottom bracket so that should go over there like so righty loosey lefty tighty where's my tool there we go Gonna need a bigger spacer. I've bottomed out. Okay, two mil spacer it is. Okay, that should go on. That's on tight. So now we should have enough clearance for the non drive side, which we do, and enough for. The drive side. Plenty. Spot on. So I'm just going to tighten up all these chain ring bolts and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, interesting fact about these. Uh... That's not right. That's better. Okay, interesting fact about these chain rings that I've got in here. They're biopace. Um, that means that they're actually kind of ovaled. It's meant to give you a more efficient pedaling, um, so that uh, the it's been stretched out that way, so the oval is like that. So that when you press down, normally when you're pressing down, the, it, there's apparently a flat spot around here. So it apparently, don't know how well it works. I've never used them before. It increases the power at this point so that it's a consistent motion so you're not just going sweep nothing sweep nothing sweep nothing apparently that's how it works so it's an interesting point about those i'll see how they work when i get riding the bike okay wheels so originally the bike would have come with 26s 26 inch mountain bike rims, but as you can see, uh, with these 700s, with some, what tyres are these? Uh, these are old city rides that I had, and they are uh, one and a quarter, they're 32 mil wide apparently, 32 by 62. Um, so, yeah, they fit in nicely. There's enough clearance under there for a mudguard, and I've got the bolt. But, unfortunately, if you were to put a cantilever on, there is no way in hell that they are going to fit. So I'm going to have to use calipers. I've measured the drop and everything, and these calipers will go on. Oh, it's getting so dark. Getting they'll go on fine but first the rear wheel uh, gearing wise three up front six on the back I've got this old Shimano can we focus on it it's a Shimano 600 three wheel um, and the teeth look in good condition so it should work that's going to go on. 
that rim, the rim, the wheel will go in, and then we'll work on the brakes. Okay, when it comes to these brakes, um, your old bikes come with just a straight bolt, basically. Um, they come with that, a bolt. New ones come with this Allen key countersink, which in the back of the fork, you'll have a little recess and this will go through, so that will go all the way in. Um, unfortunately, this bike is the old style, the bolts. So I'll either have to drill out the back of the fork or what I've found, luckily, is this. Apparently there's a conversion bolt out there for Tetro brakes. So this bolt here, which will go on, this will be the rear, or this was the rear. Um, so I've got to take these pads off. So I've got to switch them around. This caliper here, which was originally the front, once you take the Allen key fitting off, it becomes the rear caliper. Because it's got the longer bolt, you've just got to use some of these. I don't even know where I'm meant to be looking with this. I see that a bit. Yeah. You just got to use some of the like shaped washers to go around the fork. Um, it'll be an M6 as well, so you just get an M6 nut from somewhere, which I should have plenty of, I find. So the rear's just gone straight on. So where this bolt comes into play is, whoop, you drop that. Um, this is the rear caliper um, with the Allen key fitting, and you can see how short that is. So what I need to do is replace this bolt here with this long bolt and then it becomes the front. So how do I strip down this caliper? Hmm. Mm, not done this before. First I'm just going to take off the pads to make it a bit easier. So to strip down these Tetro calipers, we have to get to that bolt. So, let's see what happens when I take off this one. What's that, 5mm? Taking out this bolt here. Okay, that's released. Okay. So now we can get to that. Don't want to lose this lock nut from the back. What size is that? Four. Uh oh, where's my four mil? Four mil. Let's go make sure I put this shit. Uh, there should be a little stop plastic stopper on there, which has just fallen off on the floor somewhere. So. There we go. Then we have to unscrew all of this. So we've got that. 
it goes on top. That. Okay. So bolt out. New bolt. Little washer. Goes through. Spacer. Screws in. Like so. Flip it over. Spring goes into its locating hole there and behind there. Wash to hold the spring. Let's take that all the way out. There we go. There we go, got it. Put the lock nut back on the back. Okay. And that's that. Only of just there we go. So that's not that's now got the long arm on. Should be able to put something on the front with a curve on. Let's just check the tension. Seems good. Tensions there. Um, yeah, just an M6. A couple of these shaped washers. They'll just go on there. Probably not that aggressive though, because that's for the rear. Something like that, maybe. We'll find one. But um, yeah, there you go. On. Okay, brakes are on. So that's uh, cantilevers converted to calipers. They run nicely. That conversion worked. Got front and rear. Oh, it's so dark. Sunlight's gone. Um, so now the stem. Um, this is something new that I actually learned. Uh, the Peugeot, which I assumed this would be the same as, came with a 22, it was a one inch steerer, a one inch threaded steerer um, and that was a 1989 bike this is a 91 and the rally activator that I did was a 94 now the 91 Peugeot came with a one inch threaded so that was a 22.2mm stem the Rally activator came with a weird stem, which was a 21.1, I think it was, which was an old BMX style. So when I got this, I thought, well, before I got this, I thought it would be a one inch threaded. Um, I could use the stem off the Peugeot to put on this bike. When I picked it up, uh, the guy asked if I got a stem for it. Um, I said I, th I thought I had one, but he just gave me this one just in case and he said it was a 25.4 which I thought was strange I thought maybe I forgot my measurements wrong um, but anyway it is um, because it's a 1 and 1 8 inch threaded headset and forks not a 1 inch um, that stem is far too long a reach for me for, for a, unless you've got giant arms 
Um, so I've gone for a 60 mil instead of a 140. Um, but that meant I had to go down to a 22.2 mil stem. So I've had to buy a spacer to fit in there, which should allow this now to slide in there and to tighten up. So that'll be my stem, 60 mil instead of 120, 140 even. Um, these are the bars that will go in. Some control tech bars that had an old fixie and they should tighten up. So I'm just gonna tighten everything up there get it down on the ground maybe and just align everything up so it sits nicely. Okay so that's all on. Um, adjusted. These are the brake levers that I'm using. Uh, Shimano BLMC16. So they will go on there just for now and then I've got to open up these uh, trigger shifters which I haven't actually set up before so it'll be first time for me okay. um, so we've got three for the left six for the right I uh, probably want the brake levers to go over the top like that. Okay, and then they come with these grips as well. Hmm. There was a little crimp inside. Is there another one? Eh, yeah, whatever. I've got spare. So they come with these grips, grip shift grips, which should just push onto these bars. I might have to put a bit of uh, spirits on them first. <sighs> yep. Spirit she use. She's something that one. Ah, just spray a bit of this in. There you go. Straight on. Okay. Yeah, they're good reach. Um, right. So I'll leave them for a second. And I just want to connect all the cables, the brake cables up. So I've got some cable here. We've got what we got? Barrels. In fact, you don't need to see this. You've seen it a million times. I'll join you in a second. Okay, so this is the rear derailleur um, that was on the Peugeot, Exage Country. The teeth are a bit worn on the pulleys, so I've bought some a new set. So I'm just going to put those on. Uh, hopefully they're the same, or roughly the same. But yeah, it's going to be a 3x16. Three by sixteen, three by eight. No, three by six. Oh, I'm losing it. Um, you've got your pulleys, two different pulleys, which look exactly the same. Uh, but you'll have a bearing, uh, well, a sort of bearing surface that goes in the middle, and then two outer washers. 
held on by a bolt. So, first one, yeah, I know this derailleur isn't very pretty, but it works. It's such an awkward position to get there. Best way to do it is to undo that. Slide off that old knackered one. Just gonna put some grease in it. Where's my grease? There. In fact, I bought some full fill woods, tenacious oil, to do bearings and shiz like that. So I'm just gonna apply just a bit around the surfaces, a bit in the middle. that one on there. Oh it doesn't fit. Wonderful. Oh it does fit. Wonderful. Cool. Uh, other one. Where's my other bolt? Uh, okay so we're gonna put a bit of grease. A bit of oil around the bearing. Bit round there. Centre goes through. That on. That on. And slide that on. Now the fun part. Trying to connect all these things up. Um, I think the best way to get this started. Should be good now. So I'm going to put this on. Okay, um, I mean, it's pretty much done now. I've managed to put this, the Exage Country derailleur on. Um, it's six speed indexed. Unfortunately, the high limit screw is isn't long enough for me to physically stop the derailleur where I want it to. What I've managed to do is uh, pull enough tension through where it actually moved the derailleur into where I wanted it to and it now works because um, there's that gap down the side. It's the, I mean it's a mountain bike frame, um, it's got a road slash hybrid wheel in which came off the Peugeot and I built it for an 8 speed so there's enough of that room there for another 2 speeds on it I've actually got a 7 speed cassette that I could put on it but 6 speed is what I want for now um, it actually works I've just flicked through it and it flicks through alright the fronts, even though this derailleur isn't indexed it works um, so that's good Brakes are on and fastened. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good to go. So, let's just say for a second, this project is mostly from spares. I mean, I bought the, f most of the components come from spares. The wheels were left over from the project. The free wheel was the derailleur, crank set, the front derailleur, uh, front wheel. I did have the brake levers, but I put them on the other one, so they're they're bought used. The shifters are new. The bars are used. Stems new. Um, t 
tyres are actually used, so the seat post. So all in all, what you see in front of you here has only actually cost me buying stuff like cables and calipers and that £150 to put this together and buying the frame as well. If I was to buy all the other components like the wheels, the tyres, the tubes, the crank set and all that, it would cost more but they were spares that I had lying around so I've got a little a little beater. I'll probably put some mud guards on it because I've got enough space underneath. Um, but yeah, I think there's one more thing that I need to put on it. I think it's a 90s bike. One more thing, so let's see what I've got. So there we go for the battery rise. What do you think? Um, I think it's quite a nice ride, considering it's built out of spares. It came together quite well. I think the uh, the old retro reflectors really really set it off. I remember them. Um, but yeah, that's that bike built. So, what do you think? Leave a comment down below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Um, and this is one of many builds that I do. So stick around for more. Um, but most importantly, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.